so guys uh, we were discussing uh, you know the third chapter that is uh, the company's constitutional document and yesterday we have started discussion on the memorandum uh, there we have discussed uh, the first clause that is about the name clause and then there is some remaining portion of the name clause also that is about the reservation of the name we have to complete it and then we will finish the other clauses also under the memorandum of the uh, aso memorandum of association of the company and so this will give the whole picture about our first question or the first thing that what is what are the matters that we have to include in the memorandum and the format format i have shown you can watch it uh, you know on the tables provided there in the schedule first of the company act table a b c d e okay these five tables as per if the company have the share capital if the company does not have the share capital private cap company etc etc the format are there okay in every format you will find these five clauses essentially five clauses so name clause the company name okay suppose uh, you want to register uh, uh, your company with a particular name but you have the fear that maybe this name will be taken by some other rivalry hmm. or maybe you have a company already registered and you want to uh, you know change the name of your company to a particular name but the process will take time and before that you want to secure that this name will be available to the time when you will file the application and so that process is known as the reservation of the name this is also provided here for the reservation of the name and because we are uh, 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 you know uh, discussing the name clause so it's a proper time to discuss this thing also section 4 uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, yes here section 4 subsection 3 uh, subsection 4 subsection 4 section 4 subsection 4 yes please any of you read uh, subsection 4 is it visible screen is visible yeah please read section 4 sub section 4 that is about the reservation of a name yes <clears throat> a person may make an application in such form and manner accompanied by such fee as may be prescribed to the registrar yeah uh, stop so he uh, yeah yeah stop for a while so here one thing is uh, clear that's it's not that it would be without fee there would be fee but what is the fee the power is given to the government and uh, with respect to the government has framed the rules also i will upload if you want otherwise also you can uh, go to the you know india code that repository of all central and the state legislation that uh, website that is the authentic website from where Uh, you know you can type the name of the legislation the companies act and there you will find the uh, different column like you know uh, the rules regulation ordinance statute notification etc so from where you can download it the respective rules so uh, you know what would be the format for the getting the reservation of a particular name of the company what would be the procedure and the fees for that this particular section is referring to Uh, the rules as the central government will make prescribe you know prescribe means as prescribed by the government okay uh, now to register yeah read from to the register to the registrar to the registrar for the reservation of a name set set up in the application act clause mm -hmm. a the name of the proposed company or Clause B, the name to which the company proposes to change its name. Yes. So uh, here both the situation have been covered. Either 
uh, you want to form a company that mean your proposed company that has not come into picture that has not uh, uh, you know uh, duly incorporated and so uh, the purpose is when you have the fear that maybe this name will not remain uh, someone else may take this name okay then you know this uh, uh, reservation clause is very very important uh, the name that you are thinking will be reserved and it would not be allotted so this is also important for name clause suppose you thought about a name and for that name already there is a uh, you know reservation of some other person so that name may be that is not in violation of section 42 that is not in violation of section 43 that means that neither it is identical nor it is uh, you know inappropriate nor it is against the public policy nor it having any connection with the uh, state government or uh, central government or other local government showing the patronage etc but also you know uh, it uh, uh, would not be uh, uh, given to you because already this name has been reserved and for that some person uh, for their proposed company they got the reservation okay so uh, in this way you can connect uh, you know section 4 4 with the name clause also this is in relation with the name clause and the second thing that you have the company company is already registered but you want to change the name of the company and again you have the fear that maybe uh, the time when i will apply for the change of the name because i have want to get uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the resolutions in the company for that particular purpose and it will take time so some time i need it before that you want to get reserve uh, that particular name so for that also you can uh, uh, you know apply uh, in the prescribed form as has been provided with the fee you have to apply for the reservation and then you know you have to also though here it has not been written uh, that what details uh, has been uh, uh, prescribed but some details you have to uh, disclose that why you want to take name etc etc and suppose uh, in that uh, you have uh, filed the wrong details or uh, you know you have given the wrong reason etc in that case what would be the consequence because uh, uh, when the reservation is given for a particular name some time has been given in that time you have to make it would not be that reservation for perpetual ki aap uh, 3 years tak aap naam change nahi kar rahe aapne reservation le liya to reservation ka kuch time hai that would, uh, would also we will discuss and what would be the consequence suppose you got uh, you know uh, applied for the reservation on the wrong facts okay so these two things we will discuss uh, also please read subsection 5 Application under subsection 4, the registrar may, on the basis of information and documents furnished along with the application, reserve the name for a period of 60 days from the date of application. Uh, yes, here uh, see uh, this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, statute that I have shared, this is old one because uh, when you read the new statute, uh, here the time period has been changed. The time period for the company that you are proposed to change is uh, different and the time period for the existing company is the different. Uh, you know, get any new, uh, um, uh, you know, copy of the Bayer Act. I am reading as per the, yes, it was in the 2018 the amendment was done. So, uh, you know, this is old one. Okay. Sorry for that. So, in the new one, for the company that you are proposed to change for that the 20 days from the date of approval or such period as may be prescribed so either from the date of the approval or suppose the period as may be prescribed okay suppose they have said that uh, from the monday onward so for the uh, after that within 20 days uh, you know you have to change you have to get that name particular otherwise again it would be available for the public domain any person can take it or you can say uh, you know the reservation will stop it then for the uh, you know the existing company still the time is 20 
and the justification for that is that the existing company uh, have to do many formality they have to get pass their resolution and in that resolution when we uh, you read the alteration of the uh, memorandum how the name can be changed for that the you know uh, the resolution has to be passed for the resolution the notice period requirement is also there and so earlier it was 64 both then you know uh, the legislature uh, found that uh, the 60 days requirement is not within new company because in the new company they have not to go through that process of the uh, resolution passing in the company etc and so that has been reduced to the 20 year 20 days and for the uh, the existing company it is still 60 so uh, please uh, uh, take note of that that it this provision had been amended in 2018 Okay, in 2019, I was uh, reading that in 2019 and uh, 20 also, in the 20 budget, uh, you know, the budget also many changes has been done. So, uh, we have to take note of that, whatever the latest law, we have to read with this. Okay, uh, yeah, now read after this, this is the time period. Now, this, what would be the consequence if the wrong uh, facts has been supplied for getting this reservation, just quickly. Where the provided, hmm. provided that uh, in case of an application for reservation of name or for change of its name by an existing company, the registrar may reserve the name for a period of fifty days. Th that we have that we have read. That we have read. Okay. Hmm. Uh, where where after, after second where clause? After hmm. Reservation of name under clause one. Hmm. It is found that name was applied by furnishing wrong or incorrect information then. Uh, if the company has not been incorporated, the reserved name shall be cancelled and the court making application under subsection 4 shall be liable to a penalty which may extend to 1 lakh rupees. Mm -hmm. uh, a second. If the company has been incorporated, the registrar may after giving the company an opportunity of being heard. Either direct the company to change its name within a period of three months after passing an ordinary resolution. Uh, uh, clause yeah. to uh, take uh, action for striking of the name of the company from the register of the company. Mm -hmm. Or make a petition for winding up of the company. Yes, so uh, you know there is a difference between uh, the position uh, of the company that has not been incorporated or uh, the company that already has been incorporated. If the company has not been incorporated, so in that case the name cancelled that is sufficient. But if the company is incorporated, then it has some consequence with the name of that company also and in then that uh, consequence uh, the first remedy is that cancel the name second remedy that because uh, of uh, giving false information uh, the name has been taken so for that you know uh, even uh, the registrar can apply uh, the make the petition for winding up the company uh, and second take the action for striking of the name of the company from the register of the company so these uh, three consequence may be in case of the company is the a registered company this is uh, the end of the uh, you know the name clause now we will go to the uh, second uh, uh, or that is the registered office clause but before uh, I just want to tell you that uh, just give me one minute when you will read uh, of this chapter 20 about winding up there section 271 talk about the circumstances in which company may be wound up by the tribunal okay because section 4 subsection 5 this clause second and then uska bhi b and then sub clause 3 talking about uh, making a petition for winding up the company and so the question arise that uh, uh, you know where the winding up will happen or how it will done so it is under chapter 20 
uh, for winding up section 271 accordingly uh, the tribunal has to decide that whether winding uh, should be allowed or should not be allowed the power is given to the registrar does not mean that mandatorily uh, in case the false information is given it would be wound up no then the question would be before the tribunal and tribunal will give the uh, will apply the principle of natural justice will apply the hearing to the company also and only on that decision after thinking uh, judicial uh, judiciously he will come at the conclusion clause 3 that we are reading that uh, power to make the petition does not mean that ultimately it would be wound up it is just the initiation that this type of the initiation can be started okay so it may be consequence in wound, uh, winding of the company but it may not be uh, you know result in uh, result into winding of the company in many cases yes umar Uh, penalty see basically suppose any misinformation is given for getting the reservation for that subsection uh, 5 uh, uh, section 4 subsection 5 clause 3 talking about the consequence the consequence are divided as per uh, the nature of the company if the company is the proposed company has not come into existence and second is the company that already has been existence if the company has not come into the existence in that case because company has not incorporated by that name that has been given by providing the false information okay and so there is no need to take further action only if they strike out the name would be sufficient but with that the penalty is also imposed because only striking the name will be very less consequence and this uh, will may promote uh, you know the promoters to give this type of the false information and so the legislature want to put a strict uh, regime for this type of the things not uh, sparing uh, you know uh, such promoters or such person who are giving false information uh, before the registrar for getting a particular name and so there is the punishment that uh, uh, you know uh, punishment will be penalty which may extend to the 1 lakh rupees and to uh, uh, to whom this penalty would be there company was not come into existence so this penalty is to the person who applied or who you can say given the false uh, statement okay the second is when the company come into existence when the company got registered with that particular name with that particular name okay now uh, uh, you know in that case you know the penalty is uh, or you can say the consequence is not only to change the name okay the consequence should also be like you know uh, uh, something more also and so here the penalty portion you will not find but there is some other uh, you know coercive or you know you can say uh, the action that will uh, force the the person who are acting behalf on the company to think twice before giving the uh, false statement or the misinformation for getting uh, reservation of the name and so it say that either direct the company name to change its name within a period of three months after passing the ordinary uh, resolution so has to change again the earlier name only no new name Secondly, take the action for striking of the name of the company from the register. So, just strike out the name of the company and then its status would be, you know, hanging around or it may be uh, making the petition for winding up of the company. So, these three consequences uh, would be there. Uh, uh, if the company name is strike, uh, strike off, in that case, company may uh, again, uh, you know, get registered, etc. So, okay. So, this is, uh, you know, the crux of this particular uh, provision. Okay. Should we move further? Yes. Okay. Now, the second clause, as I said, that first clause is the name clause. Second clause is the registered office clause. So, clause B, section 4, subsection 1B. Yes, please read section 4, 1B. the state
Yes, please read. Section. I'm just getting uh, format you read from your Bayrect. Only the state. You have to mention only the state, not the city where your office will be, uh, not the particular place or the gully number or uh, wine tract, etc. Uh, you have to mention in the mem memorandum only the state you have to mention. And uh, this state should be the same as, uh, before whom you are making or before whom you are, uh, you know. Uh, getting registered your company okay uh, just give me one minute see this is table one see this is table one i think it is clear and here uh, the first is about the name company second is the registered office of the company will be situated in the state of and then the name of the state in this blank column you have to fill okay is it clear only this much okay now there is question that suppose or some some student ask that uh, in in what time the company have to uh, registered or have to uh, you know uh, make the office functional because the time uh, if you remember section 7 of the Companies Act that talking about the incorporation that the address for the correspondence till the registered office has not uh, functional till that date that address, uh, address for correspondence has to be uh, given only putting the name will be sufficient or we have to actually establish the office so we have to establish the office but in what time the office has to be established that uh, for that we uh, uh, have this section uh, section just give me a, a moment section 12 section 12 will more explain about the uh, registered office of the company and so you have to read section 4 1 b with section 12 so that give the complete picture of the uh, you know the uh, registered office clause yes please read section uh, 12 Yes. So a company shall within 30 days of incorporation and all time at all times thereafter that mean after that at every time have a registered office capable of receiving and acknowledging communication and notices as may be addressed to it. And then sometimes student ask that sir what about if a whole business of the company uh, will be uh, you know the online the uh, the first thing or the first question may be that uh, the procedure of online registration of the company that is that was in your slavers also uh, okay so that online registration you know when you uh, uh, flip the sections you will find that section 6 of the information technology act is applicable and so on the registrar website you will find that through the online mode also you can get registered your company you have to file all those documents that you are supposed to do uh, under section 7 section 7 is not saying that you have to uh, submit it in the physical form so uh, you can uh, you know uh, uh, submit those documents those formalities uh, through 
uh, you know online medium also and then you will get the certificate of uh, incorporation in electronic uh, medium uh, then uh, you know about the registered office section 12 is not sa saying that you have to uh, make a physical office or uh, you know the size of the office about it it's just showing that you must establish a place where it's capable of receiving and acknowledging the communication and here question comes uh, that uh, can it possible that a person without establishing any any physical office uh, you know virtual office uh, uh, he has established because uh, uh, you know you can make uh, the uh, any type of the virtual offices there and their communication also can be done communication is just uh, like you know physical for the physical communication we have uh, that particular address first is the uh, that plot name then the gully name then the uh, you know the district in which then the state and the pin code number similarly you know you have uh, for the electronic communication like the uh, you have the email uh, uh, on the google mail or the hot mail or uh, you know uh, other mail and then the particular address so uh, to that the communication can be made and in that light uh, you know now in the recent time it, it became very debatable that uh, what is the actual uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the scope or the uh, you can say uh, what section 12 say that whether it uh, talk about physical uh, office or is it would be perfectly valid if a person uh, established the virtual office where the person can connect with this whole communication are also possible and uh, uh, you know uh, all uh, type of acknowledgement can be done but the physical uh, office was not there so this is on you aap log batao kya hoga yes fashion what would be your answer is it possible Hmm? see uh, we just uh, read section 12 that talking about that there must be uh, establishment that a company shall within 30 days of incorporation and all time thereafter have a registered office capable of receiving so my question is that uh, can this registered office be virtual office or is it necessary to always establish a physical office not sure because uh, even in the books uh, you will not find certain thing but uh, to my understanding because the word physical has not been you know same thing we discuss under the hindu marriage act that whether uh, hindu marriage uh, act uh, allows the marriage between two uh, male hindus or between two female hindus and there also if you remember uh, there also we say that in the uh, hindu marriage act uh, it talk about that the marriage between two hindus it's not saying that between male and female etc and uh, uh, you know that means that is possible hindu marriage is not restricting that marriage must be always between man and the woman so similarly here also it's not saying that there must be physical office it's saying that there must be an uh, registered office okay but the question still remain that if you have mentioned in the uh, you know the forum under the uh, memorandum a particular state in which your office will be there so how to reconcile this and so it's very difficult question here uh, up to there is any authority or the point uh, if there is the clear understanding on it we will understand only that the physical office has to be established because the letter on clause is also uh, be uh, in the same tone that uh, uh, section 12 subsection 1 talking about the physical office 
ओके सो तब तक हम फिजिकल ऑफिस की ही बात मानेंगे बट इट्स हैविंग नो वे रिस्ट्रिक्टिंग दैट वर्चुअल ऑफिस विल नॉट सर्व द पर्पज वर्चुअल ऑफिस भी हो सकता है बट स्टिल बट टिल देर इज नो यू नो जजमेंट फ्रॉम द कोर्ट और क्लियरिटी फ्रॉम यू नो द स्टैच्यूट इट सेल्फ वी कैन नॉट कंसिडर दैट ओके नाउ गो टू द थर्ड क्लॉज दैट इज ऑब्जेक्ट क्लॉज सेक्शन फोर वन सी Yes. See, uh, in the United Kingdom, the Companies Act 2006, they are. Uh, it's not necessary in the memorandum to write about the object clause. So they are going in the, uh, you know, in the different direction. But here we have to uh, write uh, that what is the object for which company is formed. and uh, uh, you know different authors or you can also give the same justifications and uh, uh, that is uh, uh, somehow uh, also you know important that the object clause actually determine the company's activity because the company uh, you know does not have the body so company does not act itself it act through its agent and to restrict the power of the agent the object clause play very important role the uh, you know the prospective shareholder know the field uh, in or the purpose for which their money is going to be used for the company and what risk they are undertaking so suppose in the object clause of a company it is written that uh, it is for uh, uh, manufacturing of uh, uh, all the items like sanitizer uh, you know hand gloves and uh, uh, you know this uh, mask etc and you are thinking that in this corona time this type of the company will make uh, uh, the uh, good profit and so you invested the money then later on suppose the company uh, started the business in something else like in the electronic item and so here is the relief you can say that the company exceeded company doing the business outside the object clause for which company is formed so that is you know the importance of the object clause the outsider as an out